Hello and welcome. This is SFU Math 152, Calculus 2, um, Brenda Davison. Um, this now is going to be uh, section 11.2 on series. So last lecture we saw a sequence, which was simply a list of numbers. And now what we're going to do is take those list of numbers and add them all together. That's what is called a series. Uh, please try not to confuse the words uh, sequence and series. It seems to be easy to do, maybe because they both start with S or something, but they are quite different. So the sequence just being a list of numbers and the series being a sum of a list of numbers. We have a hard problem here, uh, you know, nothing to do on a Saturday evening. A uh, nice problem here uh, to think about. Um, okay, here we are. We have, uh, like before, a sequence of numbers and then if we take that sequence and we decide to add them all together we add a1 plus a2 plus a3 etc and we do that for an infinite uh, number of them we call this an infinite series and we denote it in uh, one of these two ways so if if there's no starting index or ending index then that is basically code for use the common default, start at one and go to infinity. Okay, if we've got uh, one of these infinite series like that, and then we decide to stop at say the 50th term, we would indicate that with like S50 here. So we stop at the nth term, we indicate that with S sub n, and uh, we add up the first n of them. And we call that the nth partial sum. I mean, it's a partial sum because you've added a portion of them. So that is the nth partial sum. And uh, this is actually, the partial sum here is in some sense a key to understanding what it does it actually mean to add up infinitely many numbers. It's kind of an odd concept in some ways. You, you can't actually complete this project. And so what we do is uh, we imagine adding a finite number like this, n, and then we keep uh, increasing n and increasing n, and we see what happens uh, in the limit, basically. Okay, again, a little bit of uh, uh, vocabulary and uh, word usage. Uh, as you know, I think this is important. Okay, so here we are. We've got a series. Uh, I is going from 1 to infinity. And uh, we have A1, A2, A3, just like usual. Sn is the nth partial sum. That's this expression right here. Now, if the sequence is convergent, so that, that means the list of numbers becomes uh, uh, equal to uh, something. Okay, so we have a, the sequence list of numbers and, and, and it converges to something. And the limit as n goes to infinity on the partial sum exists as a number, then what we do is we call this series convergent and we write that the this infinite sum uh, process is indeed equal to that number s. That is called the sum of the series. If the series uh, if the limit does not exist, then the series is called divergent. Okay, so here's here is a example of a series: one plus a half plus a quarter plus an eighth plus a sixteenth, etc., plus a thirty-second, going on and on and on and on, and uh, and not stopping. And then we've uh, have written here a few of the partial sums. So S one means take one of the the first number. So S one uh, here. Sorry about that. S1 is 1, and then S2 is calculated there, but it is 1 plus a half. That is how that three halves came up. And then S3 is 1 plus a half plus a quarter, and that's equal to 1 and 3 quarters. Okay, so then S4 is the first four terms, 1 plus a half plus a quarter plus an eighth, etc. S5 is the first five. So those are the partial sums. And uh, it uh, turns out, and we're not exactly even telling you how this turns out, that we could compute uh, the nth partial sum uh, directly from n. So, for example, using this formula, I could calculate, uh, let's see, we know what S4 is. S4 would be 2 minus 1 over uh, 2 to the 4 minus 1, which is 2 minus one eighth, which is 1.875. And that's what we got. Uh, by just adding up the first four. So of course this is a this is a highly superior method of calculating, um, you know, S1000 for example, because you don't have to add up the first thousand numbers. You simply use the formula for the nth term. It is often uh, given an infinite series. This can this can be hard to find. So I'm just going to make note of that. Often hard to find. And we haven't said how this came about here either. And so this is often hard to find. 
Okay, uh, so now uh, that we do have an expression uh, for the nth partial sum, what we can do is take the limit. So the uh, let me let me just be even a little bit more um, detailed here. S is going to be equal to the sum of i equals one to infinity of two to the i minus one. That gets me the one at zero, and then when i is one, yeah, when i is two, I get a half. No, I don't get a half. This is wrong. Hang on, let me try again. Uh, it's going to be uh, one half to the i minus one. Let's see. When i is one, I get uh, one. When i is two, I get a half. When i is three, I get a quarter. Okay, I'm happy with that. We're going to call that thing s. And now what we're saying here, now that we've been able to identify what how I calculate the nth partial sum, uh, I'm going to take the limit as n goes to infinity. That's going to be 2 minus 1 over 2 to the n uh, minus 1, like that. And uh, that uh, limit is, in fact, 2. So I claim that if you add up all of these numbers, you get 2. We can see this one, actually, uh, uh, geometrically. So we have this. We have this 1 plus a half plus a quarter plus an eighth plus a sixteenth plus etc. And I, I, I mean that is equal to 1 plus, and then I'm going to put all the rest of this stuff in, because I'm going to look at that separately. That's why I'm doing this. Um, so um, this keeps going. I, 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 I claim from my above analysis that this is equal to 2. That means that this, this part that's uh, more difficult has to be equal to 1. And, and there's a way of seeing that, actually, that I think is kind of cool, uh, and that is imagining a square. And then looking at the area of that square, and then saying, let us look at one half of the area. That's the half right here, half. So I'm going to the half. And then I think about what is half of the other half. Well, that's a quarter. So I have that, that, that is that guy there, right here. And that is right here. Okay, and then I'm like an eighth, but oh, and I, right now I have a quarter left, and an eighth is half of that quarter. So that is here. And then a sixteenth is here, thirty-second is here, sixty-fourth is here, etc. You can see what happens, isn't that? You can sort of convince yourself with that kind of an analysis that at the end of the day you keep going, 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 going. At the end of the day, the whole thing is going to be filled in total area of one. So the one plus one is two. Okay. Uh, we could uh, be also clear about this. If I write this like this, the sum of the a n as n goes from 1 to infinity, that really is what I mean is the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum of i equals 1 to n of a i. Those are, those are I those are equivalent statements. And I want you to think uh, uh, back to when we uh, thought about uh, improper integrals. And so compare that with this, when I wrote this. Here's an improper integral. What did I actually mean by that? Uh, what I meant that it was the limit as t goes to infinity of the integral from 1 to t of f of x dx. Okay. There's going to be a lot of uh, analogies between doing these uh, discrete sums. Right? These discrete sums are specific numbers, and then these things which are continuous sums. Okay, here's a, a series that you're likely familiar with, the geometric series, and uh, there's a um, there's a statement of uh, what the geometric series is. You'll notice that there's a constant there, a, and that each term is obtained from the previous one by multiplying by a common ratio r. So just let us just notice that here. Um, each term, each term comes uh, from the previous uh, by multiplying by a common ratio. R. Okay, so I, I, uh, maybe I'll just even write it out. So when i is 1, 
r to the i minus 1 is r to the 0, which is 1. So this looks like this. a plus a r plus a r squared plus a r cubed plus a r to the 4 plus dot dot dot. And I'm going from here to here multiplying by r, here to here multiplying by r, here to here multiplying by r. That's what it means. Uh, when r is uh, bigger than or equal to 1, the geometric series is divergent. We're assuming that a is not 0 because, well, otherwise the whole thing is 0 and it all adds up to 0. Okay, so how do we come up uh, with this formula here? Here's how we do it. We take a look at the nth uh, partial sum. So this is going to be the nth partial sum is uh, a plus a r plus dot 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 plus a r to the n minus 1. That's the nth partial sum. And then what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by r. So that'll get me r times s n, and that will be equal to a r plus a r squared plus dot 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 plus a r to the n. I just simply multiply both sides by r. Then what I do is I draw a nice line underneath here, and I subtract both sides. So I'm going to subtract um, uh, the top line. I'm going to subtract the bottom side. I'm going to subtract on both sides. So on, on the, on the left-hand side, I'm getting Sn minus Rsn. And on the right-hand side, it's a very nice situation for me because when I subtract that one by that one, it cancels out similarly, keeping going like that. And then uh, this one will cancel out with a next last one there, leaving me with precisely two things on this side, those two. And then I can uh, factor out the Sn, which is what I actually want to know what it is, and that uh, over here I can factor out the A, and then I find that the nth partial sum could be computed in this manner here. Okay, that is the nth partial sum. Okay, and then what I do, I want to know what the, uh, the sum of the entire infinite series is. So I, th I think, okay, when n heads to infinity, that'll be the complete sum. And what happens, I'm looking then at taking the limit as n goes to infinity on Sn. And I can see by just looking up above uh, here, this thing, well, what will happen there, um, um, r to the n will head to 0 if the absolute value of r is less than 1. Okay, If, if r is, uh, for example, 3, then when you go 3 squared, 3 to the 4, 3 to the 5, uh, it's just going to keep getting larger and larger. But if you're like at 1 third, then you're 1 third, 1 ninth, 1 27th, 1 81st, like that, and it uh, gets small quickly. So I see then that the uh, limit as n goes to infinity on Sn, which is the limit as n goes to infinity of this thing, that, that's the expression here, uh, is equal to a over 1 minus r. And I had to make this assumption that the absolute value of r was less than 1. So that's where my formula comes from. Okay, I've now uh, generated the formula. I'm excited about this formula, so let me just write it here. Uh, that is i equals 1 to infinity r to the i minus 1 is equal to a over 1 minus r. And then that's with the caveat that r, the absolute value of r has to be less than 1. Et voila, we have it. Okay. You should know at this point, I should tell you, uh, the, the, the infinite series are flat out my favorite part of this course. I find uh, there's a lot of really interesting things here, um, a lot of uh, difficult things actually, but also a lot of really uh, cool things. So I, this is, this is a, a nice moment for me. Okay, let us take a look at uh, a couple of uh, series and see if they converge or not. So here I have a, a series, part A here. It looks like this, e over 10 plus e over 10 squared plus e over 10 cubed, etc. That's what that notation means. And I, I can note, I'm noting to myself the absolute value of e over 10 
is less than one. And that's the common ratio, right? Uh, I mean, for, for this one here, with the first term, that's our, our A, in fact, first term is E over 10. That's equal to what we've previously called A in our, in our formula. And then the common ratio is also E over 10 because each time we move from one term to the next, we multiply by e over 10, and that is what we have been calling r in our formula. So this sum, this one here, the sum n equals one to infinity e over 10 to the n is equal to uh, a, which is e over 10, over one minus r, like that, and uh, that is, I'm gonna multiply through by 10, top and bottom and I could just get an approximate number there 3733 okay so that is uh, this this series a it's convergent and it converges to that number okay let's do the second one okay the first term in the second uh, series so let's we're now talking about part B I'm looking at this infinite series here the first term First term is minus 3 over e, and the uh, common ratio uh, is also minus 3 over e. I mean, what does this thing uh, actually look like? Let me just uh, write out a few of the terms. Uh, this, the, it looks like this. Minus, when n is 1, I get minus 3 over e, and then when n is 2, I get a positive, and it's 3 over e squared and then I get minus because minus one cubed is minus one and I get three over e cubed and then I get plus three over e to the four and then minus dot 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 like that. So what's actually happening? Uh, well I get uh, I, I, I can see that uh, this diverges. So, so my common ratio here uh, the absolute value of minus three over e is uh, greater than one uh, so this thing uh, diverges. And you can sort of see that when I listed it out. You, you have a situation where you have some negative number, and then you have a bigger positive, not, and then you add some big, bigger positive, then you subtract a bunch, and then you add a bunch, and you, you're, you're not going to be, those, that's sort of supposed to be your partial sums there, but you're not going to uh, be converging onto anything, and we can tell directly from this, this diverges. Okay, uh, two ways of uh, coming up with... Uh, uh, when we have an infinite repeating uh, decimal, uh, how do we figure out what fraction that is? And you probably you know, know this one already, but we could think of this one here, and we can do this two different ways. We could be thinking of this like this, which is what it is. It's 5 tenths plus 5 hundredths plus uh, 5 one thousandths plus etc. Like that. And so we could once we look at it like this, we could say, oh, hey, it's a geometric series. It's a geometric series with uh, the first term equaling to five tenths, and then the common ratio equaling to one tenth. Right? Because we, we, we take A, and we, if we multiplied A by R, we would get five over 100. And that's the second term. If we take five over 100 and multiply by one over 10, we get five over a thousand. So it's a geometric series that satisfies uh, these things here. So that means we can we can write it like this. Um, a over one minus R and uh, we multiply top and bottom by 10. And then we see that uh, this is equal to five ninths. Okay. Another way of looking at this is to say, okay, this is some rational number. It's got a repeating decimal uh, representation. So whatever that fraction is, let me call it X, like that. And then let me multiply, because I see it has one repeating decimal, let me multiply by 10 on both sides. I like this method way better actually. And then let me look and say, oh, 10 minus one is nine, and this minus this is five. That means that X is five ninths. Now this works nicely if you consider something like this, uh, X equal uh, uh, 0 0.12, how about this, four 
let me write out a bit more so I make it clear what I'm doing. Uh, one, two, four, 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 etc. Right? Keep going. Um, and I ask, oh, what's the uh, what's the fraction uh, with that decimal expansion? Then what I could do is uh, multiply by a hundred. Let's see what happens if I multiply by a hundred. Yeah, I go a uh, hundred x. That will be a uh, twelve point four 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 four. 4, 4, 4, like that. I will subtract, finding that 99x is equal to 12.32, uh, and that means that x is equal to 12.32 over 99, which is 1232 over 900, 9,000. That's quite nice, right? I mean, think about when you <laughs> were in high school and you did a uh, fraction to decimal conversions, they actually just sort of glossed over this little fact and you probably never uh, uh, saw how to do that. They just made ones that uh, you didn't have to have this kind of a technique for. So that's kind of nice. We can uh, see it in uh, a couple of different ways. Get them all this way. Okay, uh, next one. Uh, this is a, a, a particular type of series and we're going to see uh, partial fractions come into, the, come into the mix here. So we're going to see, we're asking uh, sh well, we're being told show that this series is convergent and find its sum. Okay, so I'm just going to note one thing. I'm going to take a look and I'm going to notice that the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n plus 1 times n plus 2, I notice that that limit is 0. Okay, so this is a necessary condition for convergence, but it's not sufficient. And we're going to come back to this a bunch because it's easy, it's sort of easy to get a little bit. Uh, uh, loss in the Merck here. So uh, so I'm going to even write this here. So this this little thing here that I've written, this is a necessary uh, condition for convergence, meaning if you don't have that, it won't converge. Um, but, but, and this is a big but, it is not sufficient. Meaning that if you do have it, uh, that's good. You you have a hope of converging, but you're not you're not guaranteed. Okay, so you can't just take that limit, say, hey, that limit's zero, therefore the series converges. That will that will fail, and uh, um, that will be you'll be done for. Okay, it's not a geometric series. There's no um, common ratio. So that's the first thing I'm noticing. So always when you're like trying to solve a problem, you you get a problem, you think, okay, does this fit with the uh, with the method I've methods I know. I, I, I would look and say, can I do this using method one, two, three of all the methods I know? Uh, hopefully that would be the case. Or if it's not, then it's like, okay, can I modify the methods I have? Do I need a whole new method? Is this a whole new class? So uh, it's not geometric. That's why I'm saying that. So that's the one thing we do know how to do. So it's not geometric. So that method is not going to work that we have. So we have to do something else. So we're going to go back. And we're going to take a look at the nth partial sum. See what that looks like. Okay, that's the nth partial sum. And it looks like this. 1 over uh, 2 times 3 plus 1 over 3 times 4 plus 1 over 4 times 5 plus 1 over n plus 1 n plus 2. Oh, have I gotten somewhere or not? Mm, uh, well, I'm going to now look at this again, and and uh, I'm going to uh, uh, do the only thing I know how to do with something that looks like this. I'm going to do partial fractions. So I'm going to try to look at it a different way. Again, so I'm sort of going through my inventory of things I can do, seeing will 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 this help me? So now I'm doing partial fractions, and I'm wondering, I'm I'm looking at the the expression for ai, and this looks i plus one, i plus two, and that's going to be a over i plus one plus b over i plus two, and uh, you do the partial fractions thing yourself. You'll find out that a is one and b is minus 1, like that. 
Okay, so I'm using the partial fractions. So then I'm going to do that. I'm going to use that to write the uh, partial, the nth partial sum again. So this will be when the first term will be when i equals one. Maybe I'll, I'll write it out. This looks like this. Like that. Okay, so I've done partial fractions on the on the uh, expression here for the ith term, and then I will uh, write that out like this. I'll just take a look at this. This will be a half minus a third. That is this piece here is i equals one, and then I'll I'll do the next one, and I'll this is when i is equal to two. So this is here, i equals to two. And then I'll do the next one. That is uh, i equals to three. And I, I, I keep going, uh, going, going. Uh, maybe I'll maybe even get the, the numbers on the next one. The, you may notice, actually take a look, something kind of uh, really interesting happening. And dot, 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 plus. The nth one will look like this, like that. Okay, so what has happened here? Something very, very nice for us. It's going to allow us to get an expression for that nth partial sum in terms of n, which is what we need because then we can take a limit on that. So how, how do I see that? Look at this. This minus one third and plus one third, that's gone. Minus one quarter plus one quarter, that's gone. Minus one fifth. So all of these things are disappearing all the way up, including this, leaving me with this expression here, a one half minus one over n plus two. That is the expression for the nth partial sum in terms of n. So partial fractions in a different context. So now what we can do is take uh, the limit as n goes to infinity of Sn, and that's going to be the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum of um, i equals one to n of one over i plus one times uh, i plus two. And now we know that that's the limit as n goes to infinity of one half minus one over n plus two and then this thing will go to zero so this is a half so uh we we can going through this uh, uh new uh technique we have combined actually we've just sort of repurposed partial fractions in somewhere we we, we may not have been aware that it would be useful and uh, we we got a result. So now we actually know uh, what that sum is. It converges and we know what the sum is. So this type of uh, series is an example of a telescoping series. That's what that's called. So it's when, when you have this kind of a, this thing here, these telescoping. Telescoping series. Okay, the next slide, okay, <laughs> the next slide. It, it, this is an incredibly important series. It's got a name, that's always a major clue that you should pay attention to something, it's, it's got a name. And uh, this series is called the harmonic series. Please make sure you know this, it is divergent, okay? If you see me, well you may not know what I look like at this point, but but uh, well, we'll have Zoom sessions. If you see me walking down the street in five years and you've been my student in Math 152, I want you to tell me what you're up to, what you did with your degree, where you're working. I always like hearing from uh, students that I've had in the past. However, if you uh, I ask you, were you in my Calculus 2 class? And you say yes, I will ask you, does the harmonic series converge or does it diverge? You better be right. Otherwise, I think you should cross the street and not 
say hello to me. Okay, that's how important this is. <laughs> I want that, if you're going to take one thing out of this whole infinite series thing, it is that the harmonic series is divergent. Okay, so we will notice uh, that the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n equals 0. That's necessary, but it isn't sufficient. In this case, it doesn't cut it, okay? So it's common mistake for people to notice this and then say, oh, I see, it, it will converge. No, no, please no, okay? So this is uh, necessary, but it's not enough. It is not enough. In this case, it's not enough. This thing still diverges. And we're going to uh, actually do a little proof of that. And this proof is actually from the early 14th century. So this is uh, somebody thinking about this a long time ago now and, and coming up with this method of demonstrating that the harmonic series diverges, okay? Becomes infinite. So we look at the second partial sum. That is going to be the first two terms. I'm adding them together. There they are. Okay, and I'm over here going to put that's equal to 1 plus a half. Then I'm going to look at the fourth partial sum. That's adding the first four terms. I'm just going to put some brackets in because, okay, looks like that. So uh, this here is bigger than 1 plus a half plus a quarter plus a quarter. So S4 uh, it is uh, bigger than this. Okay. S2 is equal to 1 plus a half. S4 is bigger than 1 plus 2 over 2. Now let's take a look at S8. There is S8, and S8 is going to be bigger than 1 plus a half plus a quarter plus a quarter, right? Because this third is bigger than this quarter, plus an eighth plus an eighth plus an eighth plus an eighth. And this whole thing is equal to 1 plus 3 over 2. So S2 is um, equal... Uh, I'm going to write this out here. S2 is equal to 1 plus 1 over 2. S4 is greater than 1 plus 2 over 2. S8 is greater than 1 plus 3 over 2. And why don't you try out, you try, you try S16. Oh, try S16. Okay, get the expression. And then generalize that to say that s to the 2n is greater than 1 over n by 2. And then we take the limit just like we always would on a, um, when we have an expression for the nth partial sum. Right now we don't know what the nth partial sum exactly is, but we do know that the, the, um, the 2 to the nth partial sum is bigger than 1 plus n over 2. So I take the s is going to be the s is going to be greater than the limit as n goes to infinity of s the 2n. And that is going to be the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus n over 2. And that, folks, is infinite. Okay? The harmonic series diverges. Allow me to write this. The so this is the block capitals. I'm sort of shouting at you, I guess, when I write in block capitals, but this sort of deserves to be shouted out. The harmonic series diverges. An important result. You'll sort of see it's in some sense a bit of a line in the sand. We've proved it. Okay, here's a couple of things. Uh, if if the series is convergent, then the limit is zero. Uh, we we don't. Uh, we're saying 
we're saying this. If P, then Q. All right? It does not, that does not mean if Q, then P. That is not true. Okay, so I'm going to write that. No does not mean if Q, then P. In fact, it does mean something. It means if not Q, then not P. Okay, so ca caution. We we don't want to we don't want to do that. Uh, so it, think about this. Uh, this is a a, a logical uh, statement, and you want to have that clear in your mind. Okay, so we can use uh, uh, we we can take a look at this, and if it's not zero, then we conclude that it's not convergent, i.e., divergent. Okay, and uh, oh, so so that's the, that's the statement here. Okay, if the limit doesn't exist or it's not zero, then this is, is divergent. So here we're going to look at uh, a, seri uh, a series, an infinite series, and it's adding up the numbers n sine one over n when n goes from one to infinity. So what we want, what we, what I'm going to do is take the, I'm going to look at because I'm going to I'm I'm going to consider this function because I want to be able to use calculus and I need to have. Uh, um, I need to have continuity to be able to do that. So I'm, I'm going to take a look at this, f of x being the sine of 1 over x times 1 over x. I mean, that is x times, maybe I'm just, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to, I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to confuse you. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm taking the equivalent function, continuous function, there. Now, the, exactly like that, except I just put in x. I'm going to consider it all real uh, at all real numbers, and then I'm going to take the limit as n goes to infinity on that uh, of this, and I'm going to just write it like this because I'm okay. That is exactly the same. X is equal to one over one over x, and then I wrote it like that because why? Because I can see that the numerator uh, goes to zero and the denominator uh, goes to zero, so this is an indeterminate form. 0 over 0. So then that allows me to use L'Hopital's rule and uh, write it this way here. The limit as x goes to infinity. So now I'm taking the derivative of the numerator. And I'm going to get cosine of 1 over x times the derivative of the inner function. And then I take the derivative of the denominator. Those things cross out. And when x gets really large, I get the cosine of 0. And the cosine of 0 is one. Okay, so I switch to a continuous model, but that tells me, therefore, I can conclude that the limit as n goes to infinity of n sine, what I cared about in the first place, uh, one over n is one. Okay, so this right here. Uh, is telling me that this uh, series is divergent. So I'm saying because the limit as n goes to infinity of a n is not zero, the sum from n equals one to infinity of n sine one over n is divergent. Okay, so I use the if not uh, uh, then not um, model here, right? Uh, it says if the series is convergent, then the terms have to go to zero. If the if the if the uh, terms in the series do not go to zero, then the series is not convergent. Okay, a few more uh, things we can say about uh, um, infinite series here. If we've got two of them. And they both converge, and we've got a constant. Uh, then the the sum of them and and the and the difference of them is also convergent. And I can multiply by any constant I want. Um, similarly, I can factor the c out here. Uh, I can compute the sum at two separate ones. I can compute 
like that. Okay, so here let's just give, give an example for that. We've got uh, a sum here. We want to know uh, if if it's convergent, find the sum. So we're basically saying if it's convergent, so it's a, don't don't bother checking for convergence. We're telling you it's convergent, so now you can go ahead and try to find its sum. And um, we have we've seen um, some portions of this. So for example, in example uh, yeah example six, we saw this one one over two to the n, which is a little bit like that. That one's five over two to the n, but it's just different by a constant. And then similarly in example nine, we saw this one which looks very much like this one, except for that factor of uh, 26. So what we what we just do is is uh, uh, rewrite this guy here. We, fact, we, we, we put it into two sums because we can do that because they're both convergent. We factor out the five, we factor out the 26. We use the answers uh, we had from before, uh, right there, two and a half, and then we do the arithmetic and we're done. Okay, so sometimes if you know uh, some other uh, results you can reuse them and uh, and and get the sum of something that is looking a little bit more complicated just from what we had from before. Okay, that is our first introduction uh, to series. We are going to uh, next uh, look at how we determine how whether an infinite series converges or not uh, when the when the um, when the uh, let me just put it here a n this here n equals 1 to infinity we've got this thing here and when this thing is a bit more complicated how do we figure out uh, does it converge or does it not converge because if it doesn't converge there's no sense looking for the sum uh, we can just uh, sort of say well it's divergent and we're done if it does converge we know something we know okay it converges to some number and then we could ask what number is that and that can be a very difficult question and also a really interesting question. You actually see the way that uh, numbers can combine to produce, I think, surprising results. That is what you have to look forward to. And uh, yeah, that's all for today. And I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.